The S&P rallied on the CPI news only to come down, backfill, and then retest that opening. Play with it all day, retest, come back, and retest. But we have a lot of changes that happened today. Start with the big one. We're still unable to clear that 4,000 level, bouncing against it a couple times in here today, unable to break. 200 day moving average still unable to break, but there's something changing. Since here in March, and we have the death cross, we have had a couple breaks down where we're testing, testing, and then down. This particular one, we were 8% from the 55 to the 200. In December, we were down 6% differential. The differential is now 1.6%. This is very similar to what happened in 2003. We can see up here, the cross coming down, trying to get up to that 200, rejecting, 55 pointing up, trying to get back over that 200, unable to. You can see the differential right in here. You can see how the differential gets tighter, tries one more time, doesn't touch it, gets tighter, and then flips. Subscribe to the channel, click all notifications if you want to be up to try to give not only timely information, but also information that is actually usable. Past performance is no guarantee of future performance, but it's all we have. Am I saying we're going to do the, exactly the same thing? No. Am I saying there's a chance? Yes. And a lot of things are setting up that way, but there's some things that are setting up very similar to what happened in the pandemic. Today, CPI was released. The numbers came in line 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 5.7, 5.7, core year over year, month over month. Core does not have food or energy in it. Drilling down into it, month over month, this is a negative 0.1% number. We have not had a negative month over month CPI number since the pandemic. The absolute value, 297.71, the forecast was 296.70, 296.80 is what came in. This is substantial. If you look at how we did through 2022, every single actual number was up. And then we get to this 296, start leveling off, 298, a little bit of a drop, but this is the first full point drop that we have had. And let's go back all the way to the pandemic, and then we can start to see some movement in here. But other than that, we have not had anything like this. CPI year over year, right in line at 6.5%. Now to understand the significance of this, best to look at the dollar. And what did the dollar do today? Absolutely cratered. We actually have a death cross right here, 55 crossing the 200, breaks down, little H pattern, and we break. Now if we look at these lines, it's pretty clear where we're heading to. Right, it looks like we're heading to that 101 and a half. So a weak dollar is good for the equity market. To reiterate, the dollar is breaking down, equity prices are moving higher, they're starting to pinch on the S&P. We're seeing bond buying on the long end today. We have above average buying coming right in here and we held the 55 on the 20 year. So we see are seeing the signs that we need to be seeing. We're seeing bond buying, equity buying and the dollar is being sold off. We are seeing earnings being rewarded. Taiwan semi beat earnings expectations was light on revenue, which was expected considering the circumstances. But if we take a look at this, you're setting up pretty clearly to try and test this 92 level. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow. This volume was significantly above the average daily volume. It's almost double. On a 10 day basis, it's actually 3x the average daily volume. It's just not that name. You're seeing this in the retooling semiconductor types of corporations. In other words, lithography, ASML. Here's our golden cross. Look at the buying since the beginning of the year. We've had two red days since the beginning of the year. Every other day, constant buying. So we're wedged right in here, golden cross, flips, makes a higher high. If we look at companies like KLAC, we can see another golden cross, and we can see we're at the high end of the daily. Looking at this on a monthly, and it just shows the scope of the move. Now, if you look at the socks, we have not closed above this particular level, the 200 SMA, for about 10 months back here in March. Tried again and we failed. Again, note the width of these and now look how that differential has gotten tighter and tighter after it was wider. If we compare the socks to 2003, we can see the death cross up here. We can see the attempt at the 200. We can note the differential and the size, the previous attempt and failure. This gets closer on the differential, obviously it gets tighter, flips and goes. Eerily similar to what we have dealt with before. Again, 
This is all we have to go on. What happened in the past? And this situation is very similar to what we had in 2001, 2002. In your comments, I get asked a lot of questions about trades that we did. So I'm just going to point one out. You can see this drop, this precipitous drop on the 15 minute. And then all we did was come down here and fill in that gap. Once that gap was filled in, we have this doji. We flipped the doji, giving us the opportunity of a morning star. Eventually we got there, but it took us a while, but we got there. But you can see the move, you can see the flip, and then you just basically are just scaling out on the way up. And we did okay with that one. Very similar with the S&P. So off the open, all you're doing is just allowing the market to set up and then going from there on this five minute chart, you could see this doji. Dojis are indecision. That doji made a decision and it broke here, came down, have another doji, one, two, three, higher high, right? We all know this pattern. Flips that doji and right in here presented a really nice buying opportunity for this to then trade its way up. So they were suggestions that I put out there today. The reason I'm bringing them up is I don't think this is over. Now, no, again, no one has any idea whether or not it is over. But when you start looking at this and you start understanding how tight things are getting in here and we look at the sectors and we can drill into these sectors and we see broad diversification in these sectors, I believe it's something like five of the top indexes right now have golden crosses. That really does not construe a, a weak market. I'll show you one other thing that really is very glaring that the possible bottom is in. Again, we don't know, we can only go on the past. But if you look at these levels, we're holding. Now, for example, in the newsletter, Caterpillar, we're up $10 on the trade. Boeing, we're up almost $20 in the trade. In this environment, that is what industrials do. They pull out this kind of money. You have to understand where you are in the economic cycle and why tech is a great trading vehicle. But on the long side, for longer holds, you really want to be looking at industrials, financials, the home builders. There is a lot of talk about the home builders and the fact that uh, pending sales are down. It doesn't matter if you have no inventory and we have no inventory. It's the lowest inventory level since 1960. Companies like Toll Brothers are still trading at tangible book value. That means you could literally bump and break them up and this is what they're worth. So if we look at these levels and you start seeing things like this, okay, we're up seven, eight dollars or 20% in it. If you want to follow along, link in description. I put out a free newsletter almost daily updates and alerts and sector rotations and indexes economic data and what to look for mdgl up about twenty dollars in this in a couple days again these are not stocks that are acting as if you're in a bear market they are acting as if we are in a bottoming process and new leaders are emerging i'll give you two other examples of indicators that are glaring this is the nasdaq and we're just simply using the cues for this example you can see where we're at right against that 55 and flipping it for the first time all year long after about a month. But more importantly, below us are the new lows and the new highs on the NASDAQ. Now, if you just very simply draw a line from the new lows and you come across, you get a very distinctive pattern going on. That pattern is that the new lows are getting less and less. If you start looking up here, you can start seeing the new highs are starting to peak up or stay in line. It is not possible for a market like the NASDAQ or any market to go down unless stocks in that index are hitting a new low. If you just think about that logically, how can you take out a new low if you're not going to take out new lows on the actual underlying components? It just doesn't make sense. So we would need to see this start to roll in order to assume that we're just very simply going to take out a new low. This is XLP in relation to XLI. So defensive names in relation to industrials. I keep hearing that industrials are done and people are being more defensive. If you look at this relative on a relative basis, you can see how we just tried to even get above the 55 line on it and was complete rejection with a lower low. People are selling the staples. They are selling healthcare. They are buying the industrial for the next up cycle. For how long they do that remains to be seen, but that's what's happening right now. Make sure you comment if you like this kind of commentary. I got asked a lot to do this. So that's the reason why you're seeing this commentary. If there's other commentary that you'd like to see, just include it in the comments below and I will work it in. I answer every single comment. It just takes me some time. Now, one thing that is very similar, again, to 2003, we had this, where these companies that are classically zeros and that are gonna go out of business start to rally. 
That is very simple because people are starting to take risk off of short positions and start being long, and then they're gonna start getting squeezed. You're seeing that on Best Buy being up 58% today. Carvania is, Vania is up 44% on the day. That does not mean that they are back. What it means is that they're going to present us with another shorting opportunity once they start to crater again. In 2003, even though the markets went up, there were literally hundreds of stocks that went bankrupt. And I think we're gonna see something very similar happen here. To join the Alpha Chasers community, simply click the link up here in the top right and you will be added to the wait list. Reminder, tomorrow, you are going to have option expiration that is going to be heavier than normal because CPI was today and a lot of investors hedged. So keep that in mind when you see tomorrow's activity. Have a great night, everybody.